Hello, and welcome to week six. This week, we're going to join data frames. First, we'll take a look at why we might want to combine data files using Python. Then we will join data frames in four different ways using inner joins, right and left outer joins, and full outer joins. And finally, we'll correct granularity mismatches before joining by using aggregation. Let's put this week's topic in perspective by looking at our next challenge. We want to investigate the relationship between GDP and minimum wage. So we're conducting an analysis of the impact of minimum wage on the provincial gross domestic product or GDP. We've been asked to determine if minimum wage has an impact on GDP and if so, how strong is that impact? We've been given two data files. The first data file contains GDP data for each Canadian province and territory. The second data file contains historical minimum wages for each Canadian province and territory. We will need to perform the following. We'll need to transform these two data files so that they can be joined, join the data files together, and finally create a regression to investigate the relationship between GDP and minimum wage. First, let's take a look at our data files. We'll be taking a look first at table one, scgdp.csv. And this contains the gross domestic product for Canadian provinces and territories between 2009 and 2017. This was retrieved from Statistics Canada. Let's take a look at this file in Spider. So scgdp, this looks a lot like a Statistics Canada file that we used before. So we have metadata at the top, metadata at the bottom. We'll need to write code to strip out the metadata and only read in our main data rows. Our second file is minimumwage.csv. And this contains historical minimum wages for Canadian provinces and territories adapted from Open Data Canada. Let's take a look at this file in Spider. If we look at minimum wage, table two, minwage.csv, we see that we have date, province, and the minimum wage amount. Eyeballing it, it looks okay, but you never know. We'll need to read this file in to figure out if there's any issues. So before we read these files in, let's take a quick introduction to joining data files together. So we're going to need to build a regression to explore the connection between GDP and minimum wage. The problem we face in this scenario is our data is split between two data files. So recall in the past when we ran regressions, we would provide a formula and then we would provide the data set or the data frame to run our regression against. So before we can run a regression, we need to combine or join our data files together. So let's read our data files into Python and take a look at them. If you would like, pause the video now and try writing the code that will allow you to read in both the GDP data and minimum wage data into their own data frames. So the code that you should have written should look like this. Recall that because we are using a file from Statistics Canada, we have metadata rows that we need to strip out. So I've added the call to skip rows and said the number of rows I want to read is nine. And then for our minimum wage data, it's just a regular pd.read CSV. Let's look at these two data frames. First off is our GDP data. We have a column that says reference period. And then we have the GDP for Canada and then each province. But look at this, each province has its own column for GDP data. Let's look at the minimum wage data frame. We have a column called effective date, the year that the minimum wage came into effect, the jurisdiction or province or territory for that minimum wage, and then the minimum wage itself. The minimum wage data frame is a very tall data frame but the GDP data is a wide data frame. Notice how they're structured different to each other. 
Before we can join these two files together, we need to figure out the granularity of these two files. And by granularity, we're talking about the level of detail of a row of data. In our previous example, in our minimum wage data frame, we saw the minimum wage by province and date. If we look at our other file, our GDP file, we have date and technically we have province, but each column is a different province. So it looks like while we'll need to do some transformation, we do seem to have an overlap in granularity, date and province. We will refer to columns which contain our granularity data as our identifiers or our ID columns. Let's take a quick aside and take a look at some examples of granularity. Let's say we had the following tables, table one and table two. Do these two tables have the same granularity? Yes, they do. These tables both have region and date columns. And assuming that the region column definition is common between these two tables, i.e. the north region in table one represents the same north region in table two, we have equal granularity. No transformation is needed to join these two files together. Let's take a look at a second example of granularity. Now we have two tables, table one and table two. Well, table two does not have a region column. So in order to join these two tables together, we have to first summarize table one by the date column. Since we do not have a region column in table two. So in order to join these two files together, we need to summarize table one to match the granularity of table two. Let's return to our current example, the GDP file. So our GDP data has the GDP by jurisdiction and by year. So we have a wide data frame as opposed to our tall data frames. So each column represents a province's GDP. Our minimum wage also has GDP by jurisdiction and year. And our minimum wage file is similar to a lot of data files that we've used so far. We have a row for each combination of year and jurisdiction. We can conclude that our two files have the same granularity. However, the granularity is not in the same format. Historical minimum wage, we have our granularity by jurisdiction and year. But historical GDP, we have our granularity by year. Year is its own column. But jurisdiction, there's one column per jurisdiction. We're going to need to transform our GDP data to have a similar structure to our minimum wage data before we can join these two data files.